I'd like to talk about the key to Simmons Plane. So I've jumped once again into the Hino Hub with state-of-the-art graphics technology to explain how to get around this circuit and one of the key tuning aspects of getting things right at Simmons Planes. First of all, let's look at our racetrack and our circuit characteristics. It's 2.41 kilometres. It's seven turns around Simmons Planes and there's nothing average about the average speed here in Tassie. It's just under 170 kilometres an hour with a very high percentage of full throttle and a top speed of 265 kilometres an hour. But look at the nature of the circuit. It's basically a triangle with two big stops and maybe another half decent stop. So two and a half to three stops to get around here. Every race car you drive has got to have good power. It's got to turn well. It's got to have good traction. But at this place, you must have good brakes. So let's think about what brakes deliver for you here. And if you look at the way the cars get into turn four, remember they're doing 245 kilometres an hour. That's 68 metres per second. The car's travelling six metres or more. That's one car length with every tenth of a seconds so they travel for an enormous distance over a very short duration of time when you get down to turn six that blows out at 265 kilometres an hour, seven metres or more a second, and that's over one car length. So clearly, if you can get your foot on the brake one-tenth of a second later, it makes an enormous difference in your performance around here. So check out the number of people who try and ultimately fail at this racetrack to get that perfect lap after lap. And in practice and throughout the racing we've seen here, not only this weekend, but in years gone by, and it'll be the same for every race in the future, spearing off at the hairpin turn four, spearing off at the end of the back straight at turn number six. Time matters around here and brake performance is the way in which you get it. So the brakes on these cars, control brake package on a V8 supercar, AP front brake rotors, they're massive, 395 millimetres. There's 72 vanes in the middle of them drawing cool air through. Those big chunky aluminium Calipers, six pots, a massive braking capacity on these cars. On the rear, it's 355 mil and a four pot caliper. They've got incredible braking uh, performance in these cars and it really pulls the things down in a great hurry. So you've got to manage the brakes on these cars very carefully. So let's look at some brake data now and understand what it all means. Have a look at the way the temperatures grow between the front and the rear brakes on the run into the hairpin. Then it's about 860 metres or 17 seconds to turn six and we see peak values when you're on your own in quali up near 700 degrees. Matching those brake temperatures front to rear is the key to performance around here. In traffic, the number blows out to 850 degrees. Remember that water boils at 100 degrees. So, how do you tune performance? It's a control package. Surely there's not much you can fiddle with. Well, the fact of the matter is you can. There are a number of things that change the way the cars perform. Have a look at the way the cool air goes into the front of the car. So, Brake ducts bring in big charges of cold air and they jam that air into the brake ducting through the hub, through the brake rotor, and you manage these brake temperatures. And you control that management with a thing on the right you can see there called a brake blocker. Maybe you chuck in 25 mil of blocker, 50 mil, maybe 75 mil of block. You're altering the temperatures, not only the peak values of those temperatures, but also the bottom values. Now, they're a pretty ugly little device. This is what one looks like. This is from Brad Jones Racing, an ugly little blocker there. That pretty much blocks off that entire aperture. This is one that's got a few more holes, and every team has its own approach to this. Now, every time you alter about 25 mil of blocker, and it's done in different ways, you raise the bottom value temperature by about 70 degrees, so you're retaining heat in the brake system. And it peaks the temperatures up about another 30 or 40, so it's more about managing the minimums than it is about changing the maximums. You can also change the brake master the cylinders. These are on the front and rear brake systems. You can change their diameter. That gives the driver brake pedal feel. Tim Slade, for example, is a driver this year that's been fiddling with a variety of different brake master cylinders. There are three different control pads in the front of the car and the back of the car that are available to the drivers. All these things are tuning elements. And this little puppy, none of this stuff is pretty. This is a brake duct. Every team has its own idea of how to build these things. It guides cool air into the car. The tuning and the management and the control of those temperatures, keeping those fronts and rear temperatures even, is very important for lap time. You're chasing a tenth or even a hundredth. So how about some fun facts? These cars are about one and a half ton. They're big, they're heavy, they're fast. Race, 84 laps, a couple of hundred kilometres. Stop and think about the number of braking events around here. 84 lap race, three stops, 252 brake events. Now that means per car, 
per lap, you'll generate energy in the car because as the car's moving, it's generating kinetic energy. You're going to stop the car, that generates thermal energy. So you're dissipating heat through that thermal energy. You've got to convert it in some way, shape or form blazing along at 265 kilometres an hour. So when you do that, the amount of energy you generate is a little over, per lap, per car, two kilowatt hours. What's that? Well, that would be enough to power Mark Scaife's beer fridge, which, as you can imagine, takes a fair bit of power. Across the entire field of 26 cars, it's going to be something in the order of about 12 and a half days of power for the average household in Australia, or 200 kilowatt hours. There's massive energy in stopping these cars and there's incredible amounts of time if you can get it just right.